What's up everybody, Ben Lampkins here with Angler's Itch Outdoors. In this video we're going to be talking about some of the basic catfish rigs that I like to use. I'm going to show you the different types and uh, maybe show how I tie some of these different ones up. So stick around, let's get to it. just kind of start uh, with my favorite one of my favorite ones here is um, I've already got rigged up on one of my rods here is a Santee Cooper rig it's one I like to use in the river a lot um, get this on done here I run uh, circle hooks on a lot of these rigs uh, anywhere from a 8 out to a 10 out circle hook I run just kind of depends on where I'm fishing and what I'm using for bait um, what I'm kind of going after for some of them bigger catfish I'll go maybe a little smaller for channel cat but um, this here is uh, the Santee Cooper rig you can kind of see it's here's your main line and it comes down to a sinker slide And it comes to your barrel swivel. And then your leader line, which usually I run a 50 pound monofilament on that. And then it'll go down here to your float. And there's different kinds of floats you can use for that. Use those floats, these are more adjustable. You got like demon dragons you can use. And that'll go down to your your hook there. As you can see, so that's one of my favorite ones. Um, it's pretty quick and easy to tie up. Really like that sinker slide option. Um, and what I like about those clips on there, since I fish uh, rivers and especially Missouri River a lot, I like having the option of changing up my weights for different current situation so you can just kind of take that if you can see there or not you know clip and you put your weight on and then you know that slide the fish don't feel that weight on there and then if you want to go with a bigger weight just pull it off that clip go with a different weight or whatever so I really like that um, you can run your main line straight through some of these weights. It just kind of depends on what weight. Your line would just go through there and slide through that, but I, I like really like having that sinker slide for you know that clip. I like changing out my weights, and I, I like like sometimes inside of here it can be a little rough on that line. You don't want to be wearing any of your line out, so I prefer those slides a little bit better. Um, but yeah, that's the Santee Cooper rig. Uh, and any of these rigs, you can really play with them, change them up how you want. Um, you know, you can kind of add floats in certain areas or or what have you. Um, but these are just kind of the basic ones. Um, so that that's one I, I was running. Gotta get that one put up. And then um, this next one. Here, this one's actually this is like the uh, slip sinker setup or the uh, Carolina rig. This is actually on my striper rod setup. I like to uh, uh, do down riggers on uh, with a shad, live shad down below the boat when I'm uh, out striper fishing, but. Uh, so this would go to your lead line here. There's your sinker there. And I like to put that little bead on there. And then the swivel. A bead will kind of help protect that knot there from your weight slamming into it. And then it goes down. It's down to your hook there. 
pretty simple rig as well. I use this for catfish as well, but this is just when it happens. You just put it whatever size weight. You can also use add your sinker slide there, and then do like changing the weights out as well. Pretty similar to that Sandy Cooper setup, and then it would just run down. Um, I use a braid on the river. Um, I like both mono and braid, it just kind of depends on what's going on. Um, but if you're running your main line uh, down to a swivel, I like using swivels because they help, especially in a current with that spinning that may occur um, in that current or whenever you're casting. It kind of helps with the tangling and and as you know, catfish tend to want to spin on you when you're fighting them up to the boat. So those swivels kind of help help with that, keep you kind of getting all spun up. Um, but if you run your main line, I like to add those. Even if you run mono all the way through, I still like adding that swivel just for that, uh, helping with that spinning that may go on. and in the current or the fish will spin on you or whatever just kind of keeps you from getting all spun up and tangled up um, so get this put up here but yes yeah, that's, that's my striper rig can't wait to get out and go after some of those as well I like to go North Fork Lake I go over to Arkansas fish for stripers out there sometimes Beaver Lake I tell you what, I was at the river, I think yesterday, checking it out. Still ice coming down the river. And, you know, lake's still kind of, thaw. it's a little warmer out. There's still ice ice out there. That's why uh, I'm not out fishing. I'm doing this video just kind of showing you some of the rigs. I figure while we wait for things to kind of straighten up so we can get back out there. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for spring and warm weather. Get out there in some shorts and flip-flops. Get my dad tan going. Um, I've been fishing in some cold weather lately, so I'm ready to kind of change it up. But anyway, so here's um, another rig I do here. This is like a kind of like a Kentucky rig or like a drop shot type rig here. Uh, this line, this would be the main line. I'm trying to use bright colors on these lines so you guys can see them. And there's that swivel and then it will come down to your first hook you run one or two hooks or more I guess on this however and that goes down to your next hook and then down to your weight and that uh I still like to add the clip because like I said I like being having that quick option of changing out my weights for different if I move from heavy current to lighter current or whatever I can change up my weights so I like just having that option you can just tie straight to your weight there but you know, I like to you know, take them off and for whenever I go to store my rods I, I like to be able to just take my weights off and then, but that's kind of how that goes there I'm trying to get it to view in the camera there and this is good for like you know if you're fishing straight down under the boat that's a good setup especially if you like fishing some heavy color cover sorry um, you're going straight underneath the boat kind of keeping you from getting snagged up you know fishing for flathead or whatever and some heavy color cover you just go straight down with it it's a good rig for that and um, but yeah that's that's one of the ones I've used I also like about it is you can run two different baits in one area to see what they're going what's going on there you know I could put a head here and a body part here or bluegill shad you know change it up and run a couple different baits that way so and I do circle hooks on those as well oh and another thing I want to mention it is important when you do tie these to have that little tag line hanging off there you don't want your line your hook directly on that main line you want that fish to be able to come in and 
take that hook off of there so it gives them more to bite onto there instead of it being on that main line. You definitely want it hanging off there, right? So I was gonna mention that about that. And then another popular one here. Get my little weight here. I've been just kind of. So that's what I like. You just pop them off and you got your weight. Now this one here. This is a three-way rig. Orange line be your main line here, and then your weight goes off of there, off your three way over to your hook. You can see that you can adjust that line, you know, for however deep you want that, or however long you want that, if you want it up or what have you. And you can also add floats to this as well. I don't know what to do with that. Okay. Demon Dragon or Float. You can add to that. Keep that bait up off the bottom. So that's, that's a three way rig there. Pretty simple. Just a swivel there. So and then there's this one here that I kind of, as a kid, started off. Still like to do it every once in a while with the old slip bobber. You know, you got I run a J hook or a treble hook on these, this setup. You know, you'll have your split shot or your weight or whatever. Depending on how heavy of a bait you're using. I'll use uh this a lot with a uh, for dip baits. Run that worm with the treble. And um do pretty good with that. What I like about it, you can adjust it, your depth with it. Um, you can cast better because you can reel it up to that point. Cast much better. Um, the fish don't feel it as much. You'll have, usually you'll have a bobber stop somewhere at that point. I don't have any on me, but um, and that'll just kind of sink down or whatever to that stopper, and then you're sitting there with it like so. Um, I like these over those those big round bobbers, you know, you see that just kind of clip on. When you cast them, they tend to want to tumble and tangle. Because um, I like these when you reel them up. You ain't got so much hanging off when you go to cast. It casts a lot better. And the, those big round ones, the fish can feel them. I mean, they work. You can catch on them. But uh, I like them just not feeling that big heavy bobber up there. Uh, that's a fun way to fish. Mostly use this for channel cat. Uh, but you can catch... Uh, other catfish on blues and flathead you can get bigger bobbers for different situations but this just kind of gives you the idea of what what uh, goes on with that so um, and then another one here you also got the uh, dragon weights for go to drag bait so let's see which one we'll start with here like you can do it on this three-way setup. You would take you can take off this weight here. These already come with that clip on them. Some of them do. So you already got that, but I got it tight on here. So it'd be like a three-way rig. You'd want to add a float some kind of float to there before your hook there. I don't have one on here because I was just showing you how that other rig is, but and then you got that. So there's your main line. What that does is back. These are designed to drag along the bottom like so. So you can actually drag your baits through the water. It's a real effective way for catching catfish. Um, and then that float will kind of keep it up off the bottom. You can run that line off there, but these these are great. The reason why they're just designed to drag over any you know cover or structure that might snag up with any other type of weight. So um, yeah, these things are great for for 
drifting or dragging your weights through there. Um, you can also just have it, you know, clip directly to. Just clip that off there real quick so you can kind of see. You can also clip it directly to that three-way like so. Your main line here. You would drag it, have you float. So you just kind of however you want to. And then that just drags along the bottom like so. Pretty good. So there's that that way. I think that kind of covers a lot of the. And like I say, you can kind of change things up and do put floats in certain ways. Like even these demon dragons, they've got um, you know different tying points here. You can have uh, a line from here with a weight your hook, a main line, or you can just run your main line and your leader line off of there. Uh, there's different ways of doing these. Um, so, but I, honestly, I prefer just the regular old float like I showed you on that Santee rig. Um, I mean, with these, you got more knots in every area, which uh, some say the more knots, the more chance of uh, something happening there, which I don't know if you tie a good enough knot you should be good I don't I, don't, I haven't had any issues with my knots they always if I got snagged or something my, my line always breaks before the knot so I know I got pretty good knots going but um, these are an option they make noise I don't think the catfish really care by it, that it looks like I think that's more appealing to the fishermen <laughs> I don't think a catfish can tell any different from this and a float over there um, and there's different size floats you can get those foam ones work just fine. You can even add rattles to those if you feel like that's going to help. But as far as visually, I don't think that really catfish really care much for that. But they look cool. Uh, they work. I've, I've used them. I don't know. I don't think they make much of a difference than a regular float. So that's my opinion on that. They do make them in different sizes. Um, you know, this is kind of my arsenal here. I'll have you know, your barrel swivels. I like good heavy duty ones. Uh, you know, because you're fishing for big catfish, you want to make sure they're work for you. You know, I got my different clips here. These come with barrels, swivels on them. You, but even just the clip alone is, is nice for changing out those weights depending on what setup you go with. These I've got a bunch of sinker slides see that I like these a lot uh, there's some that are better than there's some you got to kind of some that are really thin there and they break really easily when I go to even cast they break off I found these uh, they're a little more heavy duty um, I like those so uh, some of these beads for some of the things I do on uh, some of those uh, sinkers slide like uh, some of these egg sinkers and stuff um, so those are kind of the basic things I carry all kinds of different lead weights out there I use these a lot you know just kind of depends on what what uh, you got there so I think I did uh, get my rods down here for the most part covered a lot of those basic ones so I think I'll probably start uh, uh, showing you how I tie some of these up uh, oh, another thing, I always carry some kind of leader line with me. Uh, I usually run like a 50 pound mono. Um. Alright, so we're going to start off showing you how I tie up this Santee Cooper rig. Um, you'd need your sinker slide, barrel swivel, your hook, your float, your leader line, and then your main line. So I'll start off with the main line. Take my sinker slide, put that on like so. We're going to do a polymer knot onto this barrel swivel. So, how that works is you just fold it over. And this is an easy knot to tie with braid. So, you just put that loop through the your swivel there, like so. See that? Then you bring that around. Yeah. 
and back through that loop there. And then you open that loop up, put your swivel through there, and then just pull it tight like so. And then you got a good strong polymer knot on there, and then you can trim this off. Which I'll do that real quick. Alright, looks something like that. And that's where your sinker slide would sit and go up against like so. All right, and then we go on to your hooks. I use circle hooks. So with circle hooks, you have to tie a, a snell knot for them to perform correctly. Uh, there's different types of snell knots. Uh, I use a no knot knot or a no knot snell. It's very easy and fast to tie. So what that is, and I use these octopus circle hooks. I like that bend in there for uh, snelling these up. But uh, So this is a pretty quick easy. You got to go in through the front like so. You don't want to go through the back. Go through the front about so far. Leave that tag line and I'll hold that up against with that thumb like so. And then you just start wrapping around. One, two, three, four, five, six seven see that and then you want to pinch it off bring that other line around like so and then it's got to come back up through the back side and then you just pull it through Just pull it snug like that. And you leave that tagline on there. And you see it's a nice quick easy way of tying on a circle hook. The harder it pulls the tighter that gets. So um, works pretty good for me. I like you know this, how simple it is, how fast it is. Um, and then uh, we'll go on to the float here. Let me trim off some of this here. Then you just run your float. <coughs> Excuse me. Like so. And there's your leader line, your hook float. And it's ready to be attached to your swivel main line. So here, since you can't do, really do a polymer on this one, uh, a few different knots you can tie at this point. Um, but I'm just going to, I usually use like a hangman's knot. So how that works is just go through like so. pull out plenty of extra line there. I fold out, put my pinky and pull line through. Grab right here where it's like so. And I'll start pull this over here. Wrapping this around. One. Two. Three. Four, I don't know, about five times or so. And that, that's got to go through that loop I had with my pinky. Oh, lost her there. It's a little easier to tie when you're not trying to stay on the camera here, but there we go. And you just pull that through and then pull. Cinch that tight. That makes a nice strong knot. Anytime you get hung up, 
and I got to pull it loose and that line breaks. It always breaks below that knot, so that tells me that's a pretty good knot. Uh, that's one of the ones I use. And then you're pretty much ready. Oh, and that's your Santee Cooper setup. Um, and these are kind of, this setup's kind of similar to most all the other ones I showed you that I use kind of the same same knots and stuff for the different, but there's your sinker slide, barrel swivel, main, off the main line there, and then your leader line, your float, and then there's your hook all snelled up. So that's that Santee Cooper setup. And this next one, this was that Kentucky style rig or the drop shop type set up here. This one's a little bit more complicated. I had to really kind of practice this one. Um, I'll just kind of show you how I do that. Let me get a piece of, let's see, a piece of mono here. All right, so now I'm going to show you that uh, Kentucky type setup, that drop shot with a um, double hook. Uh, this one I kind of, a little bit harder not to remember I had to kind of really practice this one, but I kind of got to use your mouth, so I'm showing you from this angle. Uh, so how that's done, you take your leader line and you make a big loop like so. See that? You just make a big loop in that. And then you'll take where that comes together there, You'll start one, two, three, four, five, six, five or six times. And then you pull that loop that you made through that. And then that's where it goes to the mouth. Pull the fingers out. You'll see that kind of, you pull those two lines, boom, then you got that loop. See that? All right, so now you got your, your loop. I'm just showing you on the one loop. You can do another, if you want to do another one, you'd do that same thing. You'd make that loop like I showed you, run your finger, spin it, pull it back through, and you'd have, you can pretty much keep doing that as many as you want so but anyway I'm just showing you for example on this one and then once you have your loop here this is one time you do want to go from the back side this time you're going from underneath so you will take that loop just pinch it together push that through like so. And this is where you'll kind of begin weaving this through. So you go, your hook will go through like that. So you come down over, back up, bring that hook through, and then you go the opposite way back up, bring that hook through, and you just kind of keep going back and forth like that. Until it kind of weaves it on around there like see that? And then you pull that tight all the way up. And then that gives you that nice strong set up there so see how that looks it kind of you kind of weave it on there so it just takes a little practice this one you just got to kind of back and forth through that loop and you'll kind of see how it starts to wrap itself around that the hook there so and then you have a nice little setup there now you can see how that while you go through the back the way that hook set up it kind of acts as like a little springy action so whenever that fish gets a hold of it it wraps it around and gets them in the corner of the mouth. So 
that one's a little bit different. I wanted to show you that one. Um, and then you have your, you know, your weight down here. You just tie whatever knot down there. You'd be up to your uh, main line again. It's like I showed you earlier. Same type of knot. I'd do that hangman's knot there. Um, to your main line, but otherwise the rest I kind of use the same knots on them. Just got to snail those hooks if they're circle hooks. Um, and then like this setup, you go just a little bit different. So, all right, well there you have it, folks. There's some of the basic catfish rigs that I like to use. Uh, practice some of these. Uh, you can even, like I said, get them pre-tied and ready for your next trip. So all you gotta do is just tie them to that main line. You're ready to go. Get them baits out there. Um, let me know in the comments what some of your favorite knots and rigs are. Uh, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.